We got to talk Vanderpump Rules Season 11, Episode 9. We're going to roast it and recap it. We have a lot to talk about, so grab a beverage, smash that like, and let's get started. I'd like to make a click call, please. First name, Bob. Last name is... We ought to baby eat the boy. Hello? Click call for Mr. Bob. We ought to baby eat the boy. Sorry, wrong number. Who's that, dear? Bob. They had a baby. It's a boy. Oh. Stop it! Does that disgust you? Well, you disgust me. I just started this job and my my plugs weren't taking. My parents were brutally murdered and I was fat. So I turned to pot hoping it would solve my problems. But you know something? The only thing it fixed was my life. Look, all I'm saying is if you still want to smoke pot, then be prepared to spend a lot of time laughing with your friends. <laughs> What makes people all over America break down and cry like this? Call 1-900-9099-CRY and hear it for yourself. $2 for the first minute, 45 cents each additional minute. If you're under 18, ask your parents before you call. 1-900-9099-CRY Oh, Marlena. What a dump. Let's face it, college is expensive. You got tuition, room and board, lava lights. But one thing's not expensive. 1-800-COLLECT. It stays on the 44%. That's a lot of money. If you like what you see, come and get it with me. I know you deserve all you want. Cause your heart's made of cold. But don't wait till you're old. If you want it, I'll get you some. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Stand-up comedian and, unfortunately, Vanderpump Rules super fan, Jolene Lunds are here to talk all about the latest episode of Vanderpump Rules. Season 11, episode nine, kiss, kiss, revenge, bang. You guys know the drill. Uh, we roast, we recap, we try to take a comedic look and make all of this digestible. This is like a therapy session. So please sound off in the live chat if you're joining live and the comment section if you are in the replay crew. Also let me know if you are watching on the replay. So let's see if we can hit 700 likes, you guys. Like, 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 um, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Welcome to my new subscribers, hello. If you wanna support the channel further than liking or subscribing, you're always welcome to send a super chat while we're live. I'll highlight your comment. We can talk about it. Um, a super thanks after the video posts. You can also join my YouTube membership, check out my Patreon, or hit me up on the Venmo, PayPal, Cash App. So not necessary, but just options out there, you guys. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everybody. Happy, what is it, Wednesday? It's Wednesday. Okay. Definitely Wednesday. Now, remember, like Sandy says, hit that like. And uh, I'm very opinionated. Okay, I'm very biased. I have my favorites. I have my thoughts. Um, but you are all welcome to have your opinions in the chat. You don't have to agree with me. And we can all just agree to disagree without being a-holes to each other. What a novel idea. Melissa, thank you so much for the first super chat of the live. Um, Melissa is saying, yay. Oops, I got to do it. Oh, yay. My favorite part of Wednesdays. Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate you so very much. And thank you for those kind words. Jen Null 2013. Thank you, Jen, for the super chat saying someone quick do a wellness check on Sheena and Lala with Ariana's new job. All right. So we will have some news we'll have to talk about. Uh, before we start the recap. Um, so just a couple things to let you guys know. If you weren't aware, I did collab with the wonderful Ryan Bailey for so um, bad it's good with Ryan Bailey. You guys, we talk all things Vanderpump and uh, the Valley. We talked a little bit about the Valley. We had some fun. We did our impressions. So if you haven't uh, listened to that yet, check it out. You can check it out on his YouTube channel or obviously through his podcast as well. So shout out to Ryan Bailey. We had a, a lot of fun. Evelyn, thank you for the super chat. Love our weekly Vanderpump therapy. Don't we? We just need it. You know, we really, we really, really um, need to be there for each other. And that's what I was telling Ryan is that I really feel like this channel is uh, therapy because this season is crazy. Okay. Now, in some breaking Vanderpump news, it looks like shout out to Bravo Breaking News and the others doing the work out there on Instagram. You guys, Ariana got another job. Ariana Maddox 
is allegedly, okay, TMZ is reporting this, lots of people are reporting this, is set to replace Sarah Hyland as the host of Love Island USA. I mean, <laughs> all the girls are mad. We're going to need that um, little uh, clip, I think. I don't, I don't know if people are going to be okay. I don't know if the other cast members from what appears to be jealousy this season are going to be able to get over this one. But yes, that's what they're saying that Ariana is going to be hosting love Island USA. And if you guys don't know, she has appeared as like, I think a special guest or something. And it's her favorite show that she watches with her bestie, Logan, the manager of Tom, Tom, the one who Rachel Raquel called out in her recent podcast and said, Logan knew about me and Tom Sandy Butt because we were cuddling together at a party one time. We were going really rogue in the um, social media room at Ariana and Tom's and Logan walked in and he was like, oh my God. And it was like, okay, well, that's not really the, the get moment. I think that Rachel Raquel thinks it is, uh, but okay. So this is really, really Good news for Ariana, but whew, girls are mad. I mean, I, I, hopefully she told her cast members, hopefully she told Sheena and Lala, or we're going to hear about it, that they had to find out from social media. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. So congratulations uh, to Ariana about that. All right. So we got to get into this episode, you guys. This, I will say, this episode really frustrated me, but like they all do. However, it was probably the most entertaining. I think I was still screaming at the television as I do, or screaming at my phone, um, as I do, but it was, there was a lot that happened. There was a lot of frustrating things, but it was still, it was, but I mean, for this season, we'll talk about it. Uh, Jill, Christine, thank you so much for the super sticker, sweet Jill and chicken head PK Neely. Thank you so much. Uh, for the super chat saying this, uh, drops the same day as Tom in the Rolling Stones. Ariana gets another show. Uh, 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 uh. Ariana gets another show. Yes. Jen says, how long till Sheena says it was her dream? Um, I think she's probably tweeting that right now, Jen. Thank you for the super chat. Um, and thank you, Steph. Thank you to all of you who put very kind words on, uh, underneath the video. Uh, of Ryan and I's collab. We had a lot of fun. So I think we'll be doing that uh, possibly more in the future. So looking forward to that. All right. Oh, we got to get into this episode. We got to get into this episode. Um, so many things to talk about. So many. <laughs> okay. Um, we're back. We're back. We're back. Episode nine. And um, Billy Lee is back. Okay. So Billy Lee uh, is on the show again. Okay. Uh, now, Billy Lee really pissed me off this episode. Billy, we're going to have to have some words, girl. So Billy is like, have you met my friend T yet? Did you meet T? It's like, we know, we got, we know T. Yes, we saw her at the pool party. And then they cut to the pool party. And there is Billy Lee talking shit. Billy, why are you talking shit? Billy Lee, how can women not support other women in this kind of situation. I will never understand this shit. Okay. She's like, how can Ariana be afraid of Tom when she's literally living across the hall? I'm sorry. What does she have to be afraid that he's going to, uh, take her out of the world? Is that the kind of afraid? I, I, I just, what are you doing? Do you just want to get on TV again so you can sell more tickets to your comedy show? Is this part of the whole game? But if it is, then also part of the game is us not understanding why the hell you're there and also us being like, you're, you're insufferable. I wanted to give you a chance. I really did. But that, when she was sitting in the pool and then she's pimping out her friend T and the other girl next to T was like, yeah, we heard. When Tom's like, oh, it's my ex-girlfriend. We didn't date that long. We just dated for like uh, 10 years. Uh. And the girl goes, we know, we know. I'm just, I'm just here. They dragged me here. But when Billy was saying this, I was like, Billy, Billy, hi, hi, 
Hi, Billy. Remember to be a stand-up comedian. We have to be critical thinkers. And if this isn't just an if this is just an acting gig for you, and you're just using this as a platform to launch your stand-up, and you don't really care, can you let us know? Because I'm worried. I'm worried that you really feel this way. And then she comes into Tom and Ariana's house. So she goes from doing TikTok. So here, here's an interesting dynamic. Billy Lee says, um, "How can Ariana be afraid?" When she's across the hall. Well, Billy Lee, you say that you're nervous and afraid when you come in to Sandoval's house. You told him when he was making his bed and you were like, great job, Tom. And it's like, he's 50. We don't have to compliment him on a clean room. That should just be a given when you're 50. All right. And Billy Lee comes in the house and she says, I always get so nervous and scared when I come over here because of Ariana. How can you be nervous and scared of Ariana if you've basically been living there for free? Watching the dogs, I guess, walking the dogs, thank you for your service, and recording TikToks like you live there to the point where people have to call you out on social media and go, that's not your house. And you're like, yeah, I know. So how can you be afraid if you're just always there? Same, same. Do you see how ridiculous that sounds? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if she's going to see. Thank you, Valerie, for the super chat. Your POV is so cool. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Valerie. You sweetie and your sweet dog. Oh, my God. I want to cuddle your dog. I want to cuddle your dog. But this... This Billy Lee coming in being like, oh my God, I'm so worried. Every time I walk in with Ariana, maybe because you're talking shit about her, you could be feeling guilty because now you you went from, I'm friends to both of them and I'll watch their dog and house it to your strongly team Sandoval to the point where you're cheering him on for going underwater in cold water and making his bed. And then he makes a joke like, yeah. I don't know. T is going to be there. Okay. Cause James Kennedy is DJing. DJ James Kennedy is DJing at that Ziggy place where Rachel Raquel um, met uh, Allie last season. And very interesting place because it appears that like people live there <laughs> and there's always parties and it's just like people's apartments or something. Um, so he's DJing there and he's like, all are welcome. When I DJ, everybody can come. Yes, I don't know why I'm always Australian. Always go to the Australian accent. But uh, she's uh, she's like, I'm gonna bring my friend T, and he's like, Oh, maybe I'll. I just sh change my sheets. <laughs> what are you in college? You think that's all it takes? Oh my God, your bed's pushed up against the wall, sir. I mean, I think it is. I don't know. And she was like, I don't know, Tom. It's kind of bad because you live with your ex girlfriend. He goes, What's worse? Living with my mama or living with my ex-girlfriend? Ah! And Billy Lee said, ex-girlfriend, definitely ex-girlfriend. And Tom has to ask these questions because allegedly he's either going to be living with Ariana or living with his mom in Missouri. All right? Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the dog. We got to get to the dog. We have to get to the dog. Justice for Maya. All right? So here's what happened, you guys. Well, you saw it. And if you didn't see it, here's what happened. Maya, the sweetest the littlest pet shop, that too, the sweetest little dog pup, the only true innocent on the show, Maya and Kitty, the cat. Um, Tom Sandy Butt was like, we were having problems with the air conditioning. Ah! And so I put Maya in Ariana's room. Ah! And I shut the door. Ah! And I left the dog alone for hours. Ah! He said they were having AC problems. He put Maya in Ariana's room. First of all, he went into Ariana's room without asking her, aren't you supposed to text Anne and have Anne text Ariana and talk about these things? Second of all, you can't leave a dog alone for hours in a room, especially a room that you don't even know is dog proof. Do you know how many things dogs can get in? I have two dogs in here with me right now, and I'm just hoping they last long enough in their napping that they don't get up and be like, all right, it's time for another W-A-L-K. Let's go, bitch. You have to care about something more than yourself, Tan, Tom. So Tom leaves Maya in there. Ariana comes home, or Anne, I think, finds Maya, the dog, in Ariana's room. Tom's like, I don't know. Uh, I think she's, God, I tried my hardest. Uh, she's in Ariana's room. Uh, I was working out, and my LED lights were making me sweat. Uh. And so then I was like, I better go close Ariana's vents. Uh. I need to check out the air. Uh. I think he just wanted to go through her shit. Let's be honest. So then I left the dog in there. So sweet little Anne finds Maya in there. 
Maya had eaten the little, like, I think Ariana had some, like, takeout boxes on her nightstand because she didn't think the dog would be in there. And she ate through, Maya ate wood skewers, amongst other things, to the point where Ariana had to take her to the emergency vet and they had to somehow remove these things from the doggy's little tum-tum. And it cost $6,000. And Tom's like, it's just a mistake. It's a mistake. Oh, I'm sorry. I was doing my screamo therapy. Oh. Sir, I didn't think I could dislike you anymore. But and now I do. Now I do. The fact that you just left the dog alone in Ariana's room. Do you see all the boxes and things that are in there? Are you crazy? I was so mad about this, you guys. I was, and it must have been so painful for Maya. I hope Maya bites his dick off. I don't, I'm not apologizing for that. I am not, no offense, all offense. I am not apologizing for that, okay? I do not advocate violence unless I advocate violence. And this is when dogs bite, attack, go right for the balls, Maya, okay? Because nobody needs that kind of procreation. Nobody needs his juices looses. If, and he's talking about wanting to keep, allegedly, their home. Uh, they were saying in the after show because he wants to raise his future children in his and Ariana's home. He wants to buy so he can raise his future children. Um, sir, you can't even take care of the dogs. Poor Maya. Poor Maya. And screw you and screw Tom. Lisa Vanderpump. I'm gonna, I'm talking to you, Lisa. Oh, darling, I'm talking to you. This is this isn't a mistake, Lisa. If you're a dog owner for as long as he's been a dog owner, how can you stand by this man? who is so negligent with this part of his family with a fur baby. And then so cavalier, like, eh, yeah, big deal. He didn't take mine to the vet. He didn't pay the vet bills. Lisa, you are a dog lover. You're an animal lover. <sighs> I, I think it's time to fire him, Lisa. I really do. I just, I'm tired of him and his Golden Girls blazers. I'm tired of us. We have to care about his mental health, but we literally, he doesn't give a shit about the dog's physical help or health. And some people will say, it's an accident. It's not an accident. It's not an accident. When you have a dog, this would be like a new dog owner accident. This That's borderline cruel to lock the dog in a room with all kinds of things, not even check on the dog. I, I'm always like, what are my dogs doing? What's going on? I make sure to like dog proof the home. Like what is wrong with you? And then he didn't seem remorseful. I'm going to be honest. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Can't trust them with a goldfish. No, 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 no. We love the animals. Mm -mm. Yeah, well, I want Maya to go Arp! and spit it out right away, Maya, because it's toxic down there. Allegedly. Okay, everything I say is true, except for the parts that are false. But Lisa Vanderpump, if you really care about animals the way you do, what do you say about this? You have a lot of things to say about how every, oh, everyone needs to forgive Tom. He's going through it. What about Maya? Dogs will love you, I mean, unconditionally. You know, sure, does Maya give him the side egg? And rightfully so. But, I mean, what do we expect from a guy who, while Ariana is literally mourning their dog, Charlotte, who passed, he is banging one of her closest friends. Yes. And he said, yes, thank you, Cammie. And he was well aware of this. So again, it's this thing where Tom goes, I didn't mean, oh, I wasn't intentionally God. I didn't. But you know that Maya has a history of eating things. He's like, yeah, one time she ate 500 laxatives. I, I wouldn't be broadcasting that, that you are a horrible pet owner. You are a horrible fur daddy. So you know that she has this history and yet you still put her there. I, this, mm, mm, psycho, psych, American psycho, American horror story, story. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, part of me wants to say that I wouldn't be surprised if this sicko, this alleged narc sicko, um, you know, wanted to get Ariana's, Ariana's attention. Isn't it weird that he wanted Ariana's attention for this stupid email about a house, even though according to Ariana, he didn't even make an offer on the house. You guys, all he did was like say, oh, he said he basically got a crayon, allegedly, wrote it down and then took a picture of it and emailed it to her and was like, hey, Ariana, I would like to buy house for a good price. Promise to make sure 
it's going rate. Hit me back. I want to raise my future children in house because I put a fire pit in. Ah. And Ariana's like, no, no, he didn't account that you guys, he sent this email to Ariana about wanting to buy the house. And according to her, it hadn't even been appraised and he hadn't taken into account the furniture that was in it, which she says is like over a hundred thousand dollars, you know, all the decor. So you can't just go, Ariana, I want you to give me house now. Email back at, I bet you he has an AOL. He's got a hotmail. Somehow he's still checking his hotmail. This old man, oh God. Ugh. So I'm just saying it looks hella sus, Tom, that you wanted Ariana's attention and all of a sudden you just let the dog free in her room with lots of things that could hurt Maya. And then Ariana gets home and immediately is greeted by that. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, he sent a letter of intent. For half of the house. Ah! house ah! Okay. I have to move on from the dog thing because it infuriated me. Maya is okay. Thank goodness. She has a wonderful fur mommy like Ariana. But Ariana, I know you bought a new house. Mazel, congrats. 1.6 million in the actual Hollywood Hills. You don't even have to live in the valley. That's success. No offense to the valley. I'll take a valley house. But um, please don't ever let animals around this man again. Don't let any of your sweet little fur babies who you consider your children. And I consider my fur babies, my children too, around this man. He does not deserve the love of a fur baby. He don't know what to do with it. <sighs> okay. So we also found out this episode in the lighter news, James Kennedy likes to pick out Allie's outfits. Now I would love to hear what people think about this. He likes to pick out her outfits and he steams her dresses, which I think is the steaming part, I'm like, oh, I would love that because I hate ironing. I have a steamer. I never use it. I basically, I mean, I don't have fancy dresses like these ladies really. Um, so I just use the wrinkle release feature on the dryer. It's a 20 minute feature with a bounce and that's how I get the wrinkles out. So that's what I do. Um, Linda says, I love that for Allie. I mean, she does look really good. I think James probably, I'm guessing. Okay. Here's my guess. James thinks that Allie's like small town, Ohio. And he's, you know, from Britain, he's from the UK. He's his, um, godfather was George Michael. And he's probably like, I am going to pick this out because I think she might dress a little too Midwestern. And as a Midwestern lady, I'm not offended. We do have a style and I like it. All right. Um, or Allie has trained him to, I don't know, but either way, it looks like he's enjoying it. Some people on Twitter, I think someone was giving a reason for this and they said it could be because what was, what did the person say? It was an interesting take. Let me see if I can find it here. And it was something, um, going back to James's childhood and because of maybe being raised by alcoholics or an alcoholic mom, um, here it is. Okay. So here is shout out to Drew of Borg on Twitter. I saw this and I thought, oh, this is interesting. Um, Drew uh, at Drew of Borg says, this is less weird when you remember his mother was a raging alcoholic and he probably had to do a lot of adult tasks as a child to compensate. Maybe. I mean, as children of alcoholics, there are certain things you have to, you know, grow up quicker and it just, you know, depends um, on, I guess, you know, the, the severity of the alcoholism and the functioning and all that stuff. But there's always a, a little bit of, you know, responsibility that uh, children of alcoholics take on. So maybe, maybe that could be. But um, yeah. So I thought that was uh, just an interesting take. But I mean, if it's, if it's happy, if it makes them happy, Godspeed. God bless. Um, very happy for them. Okay. All right. Let's talk about Lala and Schwartz. Lala, like Rachel Raquel would say, Lala and Schwartz, go get juices. Okay. This is the only screen grab I have of Lala. So this is when she was talking to Sandoval, but we'll talk about the Schwartz situation. Please smash that like if you haven't already. Okay. Um, they're getting, you know, Schwartz is like, ah, 
hi, Ma, you know, I'm, I'm dabbling in sobriety, which means I'm just hung over, <laughs> allegedly. Um, oh, sorry, my watch keeps going off. Um, so yeah, well, he's trying to, you know, get to Lala's like sober side, like, yeah, like sometimes, you know, I like to uh, do sober stuff. Okay. Uh, uh, I think it's moderation. I love how Schwartz explains moderation and it's basically he goes balls to the walls one way or balls to the walls the other way. That's not moderation. <laughs> moderation is like, I had a beer. I had a smoothie and I was fine. That's moderation. Not, I like to get really effed and do all the mushrooms, all the shrooms, all the ecstasy, all the ketamine, all the acid, all the marijuana, and then drink all the Coors Light. But sometimes I like to just smoothie, B shots in the butt, you know, vitamin B or whatever it's called, B12, B13, B14, B9, and, you know, work out, push up, push up, push up. What? <laughs> this man, so many issues, so many issues, okay? So uh, thank you, Ashley. The like has been smashed. Uh, yes, alcoholics can't usually drink one drink because they're alcoholics. And as an alcoholic, that's that's a true statement. All right. So this was weird. Lala and Schwartz were borderline flirting. And she's like, when I'm nervous or uncomfortable, I make jokes about my vagina. Yeah, but not to Schwartz. You know him. And you know how he treated your friend Katie in their marriage. And you know that he slut shamed you and called you a bootleg housewife and talked about your motherhood and and then Schwartz making jokes throughout the episode to Lala like we haven't had sex yet, huh? <laughs> Which just again, my theory is the same. Tom and Tom do not know how to deal with women. They put them in two categories: people they have effed and people they want to eff. And usually the people they want to eff who won't F them are bitches or people that they have F who don't want to F them anymore are bitches and people who they're currently effing are bitches. I was just like, so in this conversation, which ridiculous, uh, why are they trying to push this season relationships and friendships with people who were never friends? Especially the Sandoval Lala. You, they, they didn't like each other. It was okay for them to be nemesis. Nemesis. That was okay. But why now do they have to be friends? I, I don't I don't need the whole cast to be friends. Were the Real Housewives of New York all friends all the time? No. Someone always hated Ramona because she's very hateable. You know, half the time Sonia couldn't even stand Ramona. There's no franchise where everyone is buddies. There's lots of frenemies. It's cuckoo. Okay. 115 likes. Thank you guys. Keep going. We are getting closer and closer. Thank you, Pamela, for the super sticker. Appreciate you. So in this conversation, Schwartz decides to just let it slip that he kissed Sheena 12 years ago. I'm sorry, what? That they made out in Vegas. Huh? 12 years ago. What is it? 20, 24. Takeaway two. Is, uh, huh? Why? Why? And his reasoning is, oh, I just want to say it because, you know, we've all done stuff. No, we know, Schwartz, you've done a lot of stuff that we already know about. We, we really didn't need this to be brought up. And I feel like it's just another way to shit on Katie and also bring one of the girls down being Sheena because he knows he's going to get out of it short style. People go, well, of course, it's Schwartz. And that's exactly what happened. People are like, Pfft. I expect it from Schwartz, but Sheena, come on. <laughs> and it's just another way for these guys to divert any kind of responsibility, consequences, uh, anything they've done onto the women. They want to divide and conquer. And that's exactly what they're doing. So then Lala's like, are you serious? Are you, are you, what? And he's like, yeah. Did, does Katie know? No. And then, oh yeah, me and Sheena laughed about it over Christmas. So then Lala takes this information. I feel like every time I say Lala, it has to be like Rachel Raquel now. 
Yeah, 12 years ago. He's bringing this up now when Sheena was with Shay. So then Lala takes this information. Katie comes to her house. Lala's got a robe on. She's like, oh, I just love when Ocean isn't here. Uh, no, she didn't say it like that. That sounded bad. She's, uh, she loves getting it clean before, you know, if Ocean's down for a nap or something. Because she's going to mess up. And Katie's like, yeah, my dogs do that. And I was like, again, same girl, same. My dogs always pull all the toys out of the toy box. If I put it back, especially my lab, Teddy, he's like, okay, bitch, <laughs> toys out. And he just goes and puts all the toys out. So then Lala says, tells Katie this and then says in a confessional, I wanted to do this before telling Sheena because I didn't want Sheena to be able to put a positive spin on this. What? So you, she essentially wanted Sheena to feel the heat of this. <sighs> okay. So she doesn't give Sheena a heads up. She tells Katie and Katie goes, when, when did this happen? Did this, like when we were married, when we we're dating. And Lala says, I think a couple years ago, girl, it was 12. It was 12 years ago. There, it's a whole sixth grader years ago. People in sixth grade, possibly even some seventh graders, 12 years. Not saying it's right, but they weren't even friends then. They didn't even like each other. And according to Sheena, when she talks to Katie about it, Schwartz plopped one on her. And can we even trust Schwartz? He's like Mr. Blackout. He is known <laughs> for blacking out. Oh, my gosh. Linda says, you don't believe she didn't tell Sheena first. I, from the look on Sheena's face, I don't think Sheena's that great of an actress. No offense, all offense. I think... She didn't tell Sheena. Uh, she See, Linda, to me, she didn't seem prepared, so that's interesting. So, oh, my goodness. So, basically, yeah, the irony variant says is that Katie didn't like her then because Sheena was messing with a married man. So, she was like, you're a hoe. And then Sheena essentially kind of proved her right. I mean, the biggest hoe is Schwartz. Ho. He's like a ho. Um... So then Katie's got this information and she's like, oh, God, freaking Schwartz. He does this to me every single time. OK, so let's go to the actual event at Ziggy's or whatever it's called. Oh, my God. So we go to Ziggy's, right? This like pool area, backyard, apartment complex thing. Who the hell would want to live here? Maybe 20 somethings. All right. And Ariana shows up. And she's looking, you know, fresh to death, like she always does. And Tom Sandy Butt is sit, standing by Brock. And Brock's like, hey, yeah, yeah, I've had a couple three, a couple orgies. See, there was uh, two guys and two girls, so it wasn't gay. He's still trying to justify, and we're like, we don't think it's gay, Brock. It's fine. Yes, they, but there were two penises, but one was mine, and there were two vaginas to just, you know, say. And the koala, there was a, but the koala was just watching because they're pivots, they're big pivots. People don't know, but koalas are big pivots. They love eating lettuce and watching people have sex, pivots. Anyways, um, so he's talking to Sandoval. Ariana walks in, Sandoval's like, oh, Ariana looks, she looks really good. Dress is good. Ew, ew, Tom, ew, Tom. Don't even look at her. Ew, Tom. <sighs> So weird. So weird. All right. Brock and those black, just Brock in general. All right. And then Joe's there and Joe comes in and Joe's got, she's like, oh. <laughs> and Schwartz goes, Joe, what do you want? Joseph? He calls her Joseph. And she's like, um, what do I want? What do I want? Um, uh, tequila. I have a shot. I have a shot. And he's like, of course. I knew it, Joseph, you'd want a shot. Yeah, I want a shot. I'll just take like a shot. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, this is so crazy. Oh God, here comes Katie. Oh God, these girls are so mean to me. La 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 la. A la 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 la. A la 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 la. <laughs> and at one point, she like covers her ears. Okay. But before we get to then, here comes Sheena. And Sheena's like, hey, Joe, what's up? Yeah, I'm off my Zola, so I'm drinking a little bit. What's going on? Why are you wearing that hat? Take off that hat. And Joe's like, ah! 
what your hairstylist, your braids, get your braids, take off your hat. No, I like my hat. I'm sweating. You're sweating. Well, then put your hair up in a ponytail and take off the fucking hat. I was like, oh my God, Sheena, let, I will agree that Sheena should just let Joe wear the hat. I love wearing hats. I don't think there's anything wrong with Joe wearing hats. There's a lot of other things wrong with Joe. Hats is not one of them. Sheena's like, take off your fucking hat. Now I think Sheena didn't like the hat because it was a Tom Tom hat. Girl, what did you think was going to happen when you showed up as an accomplice to the scandal affair in a Tom Tom hat? What did you think was going to happen? You think the girls are going to go, hi, how was Big Bear? Nice hat. Oh, God. You know what we love about you, Joe, is how you stopped being friends with all the girls just so you could have sex with Schwartz, just so he could, you know, string you along and leave you for a 23-year-old. That's our favorite part about you. Ah, that's so good. And Joe's like, no, I love the hat. Give me the, give me the, give me the hat. <laughs> I love the hat. And then she sits down and here comes Billy Lee. Oh my God, the problem starter. What's wrong, Joe? What's wrong with you? And Joe's like, nothing, <laughs> nothing's wrong. I'm just, I'm just, I just don't want to hear it. And all the ladies were saying is Katie came in and she was like, oh, she's creepy. She is a psycho, whatever. And everyone's like, is that Joe? And Joe's like, I think they're talking about me. And then here comes Tom Sandy butt. And um, that's when Billy Leah was like, oh my God, Tom, the girls are like, keep looking over here and mean mugging. I'm like, Billy, you're like 40. You have to stop. You have to stop with this mean mugging. Okay. The girls don't like Joe. They have reasons not to like Joe. All right. Joe has done some things. Again, consequences. Can we stop? with this bully word. So Joe decided again to bring up the fact that she thinks she's being bullied by the girls because they're calling her or saying she has crackhead energy on social media. Hello, Joe. Ding, ding, ding. Hi, it's Jolene. Hi, how you doing? Um, uh, because she has also ADHD. Hey, Joe. Hey, it's Jolene. Hi. Uh, Stand-up comedian. Hilarious. Jolene Lunzer. Nice to see you. Uh, well, I'm not seeing you. I'm talking to you on the phone. Anyways, I have ADHD too. Yeah. And you know who called you a crackhead first? Yourself on your social media. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is like an inside joke you say to people. And now Katie has said it, but you make the joke all the time. So let's not pretend this just came out of nowhere. Okay. Bye-bye. And hang up. <sighs> the fact that Joe, this isn't bullying. I, I hate the fact that it has, we've become a society now, <laughs> not to be too preachy, where grown adults who do shitty things to other adults and then those adults react or don't like them or don't ex accept them go, I'm being bullied. You're not being bullied. Nobody's bullied. No one's saying because you're neurodivergent or because you have ADHD. Hi, me too. No, girl, you're moving weird. All right. You maybe the fact that they don't like you is because you completely ditched your best friend, Kristen Doty, to move in with Tom, to have sex with him. And like Ariana's saying, you came to Ariana's house for Thanksgiving. She hosted you. She thought you were, you were a friend to her. All the while, you knew and were an accomplice to this affair that you guys had a mutual friend who was cheating with Ariana's boyfriend at the time. People aren't going to like you after you do those sort of things. It's not a girl move. That's not a woman-friendly move. When you move for the problematic men, the women are not going to accept you to the party, nor should they. You had many other problematic women like Billy Lee and this new tea, which maybe she's nice. I don't know. Um, sitting by you. You were not bullied. <laughs> Okay. And if, I mean, yes, you have a lot of energy, but I think some of this, okay. Um, some of this is, this is why she gets along with the Tom. She has victim energy. You know, she immediately, it, it's, it's pretty offensive to people with ADHD for you immediately to say it's because of my ADHD. No, it's because you're a shitty girlfriend. Okay. It's because you enabled you um, lied for these people. You went on double dates with uh, Tom and Raquel. However, Ariana invited you into her home. She fed you. She was a nice friend to you. Same with Katie. And then the minute you could, you went and banged Schwartz after sending her a text. It's all your actions. <laughs> okay. It's, it should be a lot harder to bully an almost 40-year-old woman. All right. And then 
Oh God, you guys. And then she gets on her social media. Okay. Thank you, Cindy, for the Venmo. That was so sweet of you. And thank you, Susan, for the cash app. <gasps> and I got a PayPal. Thank you guys so much, you sweeties. Appreciate you guys. Okay. So then she gets on her social media, which I don't know if she's trying to be like some kind of anti-bullying advocate, but I would say maybe you should think about how Ariana felt when she found out about this and that her friends were doing all this behind her back and lying to her so that Tom could get his rocks off with Rachel Raquel. Did you ever think about that? Again, did you ever think how Katie would feel when you are boning? You said you were her friend and you're there for her. And then you start boning, like boning Schwartz. You probably can't be friends after that. So she takes her social media. And now you guys don't worry. Joe is going to be there for us women. Joe Wenberg, who everyone now is going to be like, oh, oh, these girls are so mean. No, Joe, you did shitty shit. You did shitty shit. And you proved yourself to be uh, not trustworthy to the women in the group. Okay. So then she gets on her social media. Here's what she says. I like wearing a baseball cap. Just because I'm a hairstylist doesn't mean that um, I can't wear one. And um, to be honest with you, I've had a lot of actual hairstylists like DM me and be like, hey, Yes, because everyone doesn't understand this, but, you know, as hairstylists, we have, and I think anybody in any profession, like at the end of the day, if you want to go have like drinks with friends or anything like that, or like enjoy like the evening, you're going to just like not have time to like go home, maybe like glam up or whatever, whenever, whatever it is. And then you just like, you know, for me, I like putting on a baseball cap because it's always in the back of my car. So it's like easy, done. Um, and then I also just, want all those girls out there to know that you can wear a baseball cap and you can still look good. And, you know, I like, I like the baseball cap. So what? Okay. I believe me. No woman out there needs you, Joe, to tell them it's okay to wear a baseball cap and you still look good. What are you doing? Get off of your soapbox. Nobody is looking for they're, they're, the plight of women is not, we just can't wear baseball caps and we just can't look good. I mean, look at how adorable I look. Okay, seriously. It's women who don't support other women and then go have sex with their friends' exes or take part in a full on scandal and double date and uh, become basically uh, an accessory to the murder of a relationship. That's what that's what women are worried about. We don't care if you wear a hat. Sheena was just off her Zoloft and acting weird. And she didn't like the Tom Tom hat. But now she's a martyr. Now she's a anti-bullying campaign walking with a hat. Don't worry, ladies. You can still wear hats. I just want to be that person. I just want to, oh, Joe, pick a lane. Pick a lane. Nobody cares. No, no, mm -mm. nobody cares if someone's wearing a hat. Women wear hats every day. You're not the first one. Don't give yourself that much credit. It makes sense why she's friends with the Toms because she puts herself, she thinks she's pretty important. Pretty important. I mean, this is ridiculous. All right. Oh gosh. And yeah, I don't think Sheena should have been grabbing at her hat. No, I don't. I think that was weird. But I also think Joe went into the situation knowing that she was going to be confronted by things she did. She was going to have to see people that she, you know, kind of backstabbed and did wrong when she completely left the, these girlfriends she had, these women, uh, just to bone Schwartz for him to then treat her like shit. And like someone said in the chat, um, Schwartz, treats her worse than any of these people, any of the women. Schwartz totally disrespects you. He leads you on. He calls you Joseph. He's basically throwing you out there to get, you know, chewed up by the wolves so that people don't come after him. This is Schwartz MO. So, you know, she probably came into it with anxiety. She also uh, don't drink so much. Don't drink so much. Don't drink so much, girl. And she handled it very, she's from Wisconsin. I'm from Minnesota. She, her and Schwartz, I, I, we see each other, okay? I was raised in the passive aggressive land. I, I love Minnesota and I love growing up there and I love my family there. But there are certain things like the passive aggressiveness and then also the nice nasty. You know, they want to be like, we're so nice, but you're not, you're nice nasty. 
I mean, I was, I'm considered very blunt. I was actually voted most blunt in high school. I know, shocker. Um, <laughs> but instead of just being truly honest or, you know, they, they pretend they put on this, but I'm saying it nicely with a smile. So, no, I would rather you say it straight up. I would rather you just be say what you mean instead of like stabbing me in the back or pretending like, no, I'm nice while doing something really shitty to me. So it's this very, it's, you know, th that's the ongoing joke for like Minnesota in that area and Schwartz being from there. And then she being from Wisconsin, there's like a Minnesota nice, which is really just passive aggressive and sometimes nice, nasty. It's the kill them with kindness uh, mentality, but you're not, your actions aren't acting, aren't, you know, adding up. I should say. And when she was sitting, I'm like, you are too old for this girl. When she's, I'm sitting there and she's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. They're being so mean to me. What are you, what is going, what's happening? What's happening here? I, I, no, 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 please stop. I just, I couldn't, I can't with this pretend it's, she's female Schwartz. She is female Schwartz. What did I do? Um, you ditched your friends for Schwartz and then you lied to people and then you moved in with him and had sex with him and stopped being friends with your girlfriends. You broke girl code. That's what you did. So when you show up and the girls don't welcome you with open arms, that's why. It's not because you have ADHD. Quit putting that on us with ADHD. Like people were saying, I have ADHD, but that doesn't make me move like a snake. Quit putting those icky stereotypes on us. That's not how that works. Okay, I know there's different levels, but stop. Stop making yourself a victim here, okay? People, they're, they're not, you're not going to have friends in this group right now because you moved really shitty. You made some really bad decisions. And if you want to make amends and if you feel bad, then approach them, you know, maybe not there, but maybe reach out and say, I would love to be able to talk to you. I would love to be able to apologize for how I handled the thing with Schwartz. And how I was with Rachel Raquel. And I understand if you don't want to talk to me. And I understand that maybe, you know, don't reach out to Ariana for sure. Um, maybe send her a card or something. But if you want to reach out to Katie, she might not be receptive. But at least you could, you know, not like how Sandoval does it where he just storm and Norman right in. But, you know, reach out and be. But you have to also be truly apologetic and see that what you did was shitty. What you did to Ariana was shitty. What you did to Katie was shitty. What you did to Kristen was shitty. They're supposed to be your friends. Yes, it's the pe those are the people you got to worry about, Kara. It's the people that are always like, I'm so nice. Mm -mm, when you're nice, you don't got to say it. You just are. People just know it. Mm -mm. You won't hear me say, I'm such a nice person. No. It's either you will see that through my actions or you won't. The more they say it, the more they're trying to prove it. So when she runs off and she's crying and she's like, <laughs> she wants a cause. She wants to be a victim. She loves this. She wants everyone to be like, oh, yeah, these girls are mean. Oh, yeah, girl, you picked the boys. Where are the boys when you're crying? The only one I saw walking with you was Billy Lee. And she, so only women are supporting you again. Only Billy Lee. None of the men. None of the men. So, again, when you're crying, you know, Schwartz was just like, Joseph, what's up? Do your balls itch? Are you having jock itch? What's going on? He treats you like one of the guys. You've set yourself up for this. And you're too old. You're too old to be surprised by this. How long have you been a woman on this earth? This is how it works. You knew what you were doing was wrong and you didn't tell Kristen. That's why when you hear Kristen talk about their friendship, they used to hang out four times a week, according to Kristen. And then when she started banging Schwartz, she didn't talk to her anymore. And Kristen had to reach out and be like, hey, can you just like tell me what's going on? If you needed a place to stay, she wasn't even dating Luke then. So she's like, you could have stayed with me. I had a brand new two bedroom. What's what's happening? Same with Katie. Apparently, you know, she sent that text to Katie about, oh, I'm so sorry for your breakup. And then goes and moves in and starts banging Schwartz. And all of a sudden, Katie's evil because she doesn't like you and she doesn't like the way you move and she thinks you're spooky. Ugh. <laughs> it's just like, she's just like, ah, ah. I'm not buying. I'm not buying this. Like, I'm, I'm so quirky. It's, you're trying to do this. You're trying to do this. Um, Subi says, when you're blunt, you can't say I'm so nice. I'm to the point I have, I never have to be guessing what I'm thinking. Yeah. 
it uh, I just couldn't when she was just like oh, 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 and she's plugging her ears. What? No. This, you're trying to draw attention. Joe, what's going on? Joe, you got to drink less. And then we hear on the after show, Tom Schwartz is like, yeah, she was fine a couple hours later. She just wanted to leave. She didn't like being confronted. A lot of people don't. We've seen this on the show. Don't be like being confronted with um, the consequences of their actions. And the consequence might be people don't like you. And the ladies might be like, there's spooky Joe. Oh, God. Yeah. That, that might be. That's probably why you're freaking out. You went in there with anxiety. You drank a little too much. You're trying to like play this role like, oh, I'm so weird, you guys. Oh, God. <laughs> Just know, ladies, that you can totally wear a hat. Oh, my God. I'm such a feminist. You know how you show that you're a feminist? You actually like do good things for women. You support women. You don't go shit on them and have sex <laughs> with their exes right after you text them. You don't ghost your friendship so you can bang Schwartz. Did you not see? Some people are like, I feel bad that Joe is getting treated, you know, like that by Schwartz. I don't. You saw how he treated Katie. How do you think he's going to treat you? Did you think you, what? I, I, I don't know. She's too old for this. It's not like she's 25-year-old T. She's, she's like in her late 30s, right? Even mid-30s. You're too old for this. You had a group of girlfriends that were supporting you. You chose to shit on it to have sex with Schwartz. Katie says he can't even get a boner. Oh, my God. And she's just like, nah. <laughs> and now you're going to have people. You're going to have audience members that are like, she's being bullied. Vanderpump. They're going to probably start off freaking, what are those things you sign? <laughs> One of those things. Like, cancel the women of Vanderpump. They're bullying Joe from Wisconsin. She likes cheese and the Packers and sitting with her knees up and plugging her ears. La, 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 la. I love Get her off the show. Get her off the show. Get her. I, I'm watching. Am I watching women? Am I watching adults? I thought I was watching adults. <sighs> so there she goes, running away. <sighs> and now she's on social media. Like, hey, guys. I just want you to know that you can totally wear a hat if you're a woman. Don't quit underestimating us women. All right. We don't need the other woman to tell us we can wear a hat. Who was the first woman to wear a hat? Can we get that woman justice for her? Because Joe thinks it was her. Joe thinks she's, she's freaking Gloria Steinem over there going, let your pits grow out. You don't need a bra. And you can wear baseball hats if your hair's dirty and you're a hairdresser. Eh. People are not bullying you, ma'am. Ma'am, stop that. That actually is like very harmful because what you do is you just completely like wash out actual bullying. It, come, it becomes where that word means nothing anymore because we're just saying everyone's a bully. Just because someone doesn't like you or doesn't like the things you've done to them and has a negative opinion on you doesn't mean you're being bullied. Huh? If anything, you're the bully, like Ariana was saying. You literally, to her face, <laughs> carried on and then laughed behind her back as you're banging Schwartz and Rachel Raquel's banging Sandoval while you guys were on a couple's trip in Big Bear. Oh, my God. Thank you, Dana and Maria. <laughs> Maria. <laughs> the Joe Ballack. Like, <laughs> Joe's sad. Joe needs to go home. Ah! And then Schwartz like, Joseph, what are you doing? I might be ready to date you in like 27 years. Maybe 28. That sounds good. Oh, you guys, I'm just, I'm not like a regular girl. I'm like, I'm like, I just, oh, my hair, just, I, my hair's dirty. And then Sheena's just over there, you know, take that fucking hat off. So drunk Sheena, Sheena's like, I'm getting drunk. Sheena told everybody, I'm getting drunk. I'm getting drunk. I'm getting drunk. <laughs> So Sheena starts getting drunk and then Katie decides, I think I'm going to go talk to Sheena about, uh, oh, I see Buffy, but hi, Buffy, um, about this Tom Schwartz thing. So uh, they sit down and, and, and she is just like, oh my God, I, Sheena's, does Sheena have a headache? Sheena, girl, I love you, but what is, I don't even have a scrunch or anything, but Sheena's hair is pulled so tight. She has a facelift. She's like, hi. What's up, Katie? I'm getting drunk. I'm drinking. Ah, I'm drinking. I thought I'd wear this outfit so I could have these moments. Anyways, I'm, I, I, I can't move my face because my hair is pulled so tight. Okay, thank you. What? 
and her face like dropped. Katie's like, um, I have to talk to you about something. And Sheena's like, what? Oh my God. What, what is it? Katie goes, um, well, <sighs> Schwartz says you guys made out. Schwartz said that? The Schwartz? What? No. Okay. It was years ago. And my sister was like in a cheerleading competition. So like high school. And we were in Vegas and he like cornered me and he was like blacked out and he stuck like his Coors Light breath tongue in me. And I was like, get out of there. That's how it happened. And Katie goes, but like you were in my wedding. Why didn't you tell me? And I actually agree with Sheena on this. Like, I mean, when was I don't actually I don't know who I agree with anymore because what was she supposed to say? I guess maybe what is she, like, will you be a bridesmaid? Yeah. And you're. Sure, I'll be a bridesmaid, but just so you know, your boyfriend, now fiancé, tried to shove his tongue down my throat in Vegas while I was making out with Ariana. Because apparently Ariana and Sheena were making out the whole time. <laughs> and on the after show, when Katie was like, where, what hotel? Was this at the Golden Nugget? You know, not the Golden Nugget. And Ariana goes, um, I don't remember. I was pretty drunk because it was so long ago. But there was red carpet. So... Vegas peeps in the chat. I'm sure 90% of the casinos have red carpet. <laughs> but um, if uh, anyone knows where this alleged makeout happened, um, let us know in the chats. Uh, so, so yeah, they have this moment and Katie's like, I don't know if, I mean, she's kind of lying by omission. So I, I don't know if I could ever trust her. And it's like, you're, you're never get these two are never going to be friends. I, I mean, but, but then Katie goes, well, Schwartz says you guys were laughing about it. <laughs> what? Laughing about it? The Schwartz said that? No, no, no. Well, I might've said, um, what did I say? What did I say? I might've said that, um, oh God, my hair's pulled so tight. I'm so sorry. My brain is not, I have to not functioning. Okay. I might have said, remember that time that you cornered me and stuck your gross Coors Light tongue in my throat? Huh? Remember that? Katie's like, okay, well, all right. Well, I don't know. It just seems weird. And she was like, well, I'm, I'm not going to tell you. You hated me. You like called me a whore. It was not good times for us. It was literally back when people were wearing owl necklaces and scarves everywhere. Remember long cardigans? Yeah. Those were the days. Flats and skinny jeans. You know, like Joe's outfit, like those days, like a bag in the day buffet. It was so long ago. But Katie, you know, she's just like, well, I expected this from Schwartz, but not from you, Sheena. I was like, well, how did you not expect it from Sheena? Didn't this show start with Sheena cheating with Eddie Cibrian? Um, so, okay. Yeah. Newsboy caps. You guys are saying the owl. Ne everyone had an owl necklace back then. So this was a long time ago. You know, it was those good as gold platform tennis shoes. I think it even predated that. You know, um, and yeah, Katie probably would have still married Schwartz. So even Sheena telling her, I don't think it would have helped. It would have got her kicked out of the wedding. Which obviously Sheena, that would have broke her heart. But okay. So we're talking about 12 year make and there's Schwartz just living his best life. He's got Joe crying, Sheena and Katie in a fight. He's flirting with Lala. I mean, these men are doing the least and they're getting away like with so much <sighs> frustrating. So Joe leaves and Katie's like, bye Joe. See you never. No one cares. Joe's like, I gotta get out of here. I gotta go drink at another bar. And then Billy Lee's like, oh, can't believe these women. They're such bitches. Okay, Billy. Whatever. T and Tom Sandoval make plans to go on a date. They go bowling. We see the bowling briefly. Thank God. Tom's dressed in 70s attire. I think it was like 70s night. And he starts doing the Corey Feldman moves. I would say the Michael Jackson moves, but they were done very poorly. So I'll say Corey Feldman. And he's like, hey, hey. And he has his date, a.k.a. T, filming him do his pelvic thrust dance moves. Ladies, red flag. If any man asks you to film him, take pictures of him alone on a first date, 
he's either going to murder you or murder you. And that's, that's just, um, what's going to happen. I didn't make the rules for problematic men. That's just literally how they are. Quick commercial break. I've got some little words of wisdom I want to share on this Monday. Um, you cannot destroy me. Ask my enemies. I'm protected by the highest God. Wakey, wakey. Wakey, wakey. That's Joe in 20 years. That's spooky Joe in 20 years from now. <laughs> Doesn't that give you Joe vibes? I mean, she's got like the shell necklace. She's like, wakey, wakey. Spooky Joe. Oh, my God. Okay. So um, also in this, uh, so much happened at Ziggy's. I mean, this this episode, oh, my God. So Sandoval comes over in his brown tan suit with his athletic hat. And says, you know who should have taken off his hat, Tom Sandoval. He says, Ariana, Ariana, did you get my email? And she's like, are you talking to me? Who gave you permission to exist? She like Cordelia chased him with the cold look like. Katie and Lala are, are sitting there and she's like, my lawyer is got it. He's like, okay, because it's been like a month. Ah. And I put on the thing, I put ASAP, P-I-M-P. Okay, that means right away, pimp. <laughs> I thought that part was funny. Come on, Ariana. I said I'll buy the house. Yeah, I didn't get it appraised. I don't know the exact price. I don't know how much the furniture is. But I want to raise my future kids there. Ah. And you owe this to me after I cheated on you and tried to embarrass you on national television. Yeah, with your friend. Yeah, when you're mourning your grandma and our dog Charlotte. Ah, and after I just got poisoned our dog Maya. Get back to my. Send it to Daryl. Send it to Daryl. That's why I was shocked. I was shooketh when Lala was like, I do think Ariana needs to figure this shit out. She needs to get back to him. Uh, weren't you the one that told us that you don't send business stuff like that through personal email? You send it to the lawyer didn't you buy a house with send it to daryl but you can't understand that ariana's like don't be gmailing me about this talk to my lawyer this is lawful things this is the sale of a uh, the sale of a property why are you hitting me up at the hotmail what's going on somehow lala I, I, and andy cohen and all them will have you believing that this is lala's best season even though she's making no sense people are like she's making so much sense no she's not she's looking like a complete hypocrite she really is. She's looking like a complete hypocrite. Everything she has said and done. Remember, send the, they, they had, didn't they have to sign NDAs to hang out with Rand? No one could talk about Rand. Don't talk about Rand. Don't do it. Don't you do it. And now, and send it to Daryl. Don't send me the stuff, Rachel Raquel. What are you, new here? This ain't no Mickey Mouse shit. Send it to Daryl. Yet, you're like, Ariana, you should reply to him. Are you crazy? Oh, my God. Thank you, Shawnee, for the super chat. Shawnee says, they're all full of poo-poo. Ariana uh, should secretly thank Sandoval for cheating. Look at the blessings. Also, Katie and Max, what the fuck? Oh, we'll get there. They've all been dirty for 11 seasons, and I need Brittany to stop with the face alterations, not the face alterations. <laughs> well, her and Jax are doing a lot of this. It's a lot of this. It's a lot of the eyebrows are touching the hairline. It's a lot. All right. So, but I saw a lot of comments from people that this is a very uh, narcissistic move that Tom did, a narc move, people were calling it, to literally invade her space, pay no attention to her boundaries, and insert himself. It was such a shitty move. So when, when Lala was saying before that this person is scary, these are the moments where they're scary. Because he lacks boundaries. He lacks any kind of basic human decency when it comes to Ariana. He will go out of his way to continually paint her the villain and continually try to make her uncomfortable. And that's exactly what he's doing. 
He's like a disrespectful asshat. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Lala's like, I felt bad for him. Um, what? I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. Weren't you the one that hopped up like you're going to fight him? No wonder she understood uh, Schwartz's moderation conversation because she doesn't understand moderation either. She's either all in on hating him or, or she's like, I love him. I want to breastfeed him. Yeah, scary. But Ariana needs to get over it three months later. They're like, oh, you got you to get over it because it's not about them. You know, Aria or Lala is literally crying most episodes being like, I just went through so much and I, I'm just still processing all this stuff with Rand or pickleball guy. So she can do that, but Ariana can't have a minute. She's had less time to process the Sandoval stuff. Unfortunately, she still has to film with him. Um, but Rand was on the show too. And I guarantee if Rand was still filming, oh, we'd see a different Lala. And she would not be kind to anyone who was being nice to him. <sighs> Just... And some people will say, well, she, no, she's, you know, creating um, entertainment. She's doing the thing she's supposed to do as a reality star. No, 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 no. We would have loved for all of the women to have been coming for the dudes uh, this season, calling them out, holding them accountable, standing by each other. That would have been very entertaining. But yeah, me too, upon the wire. I am so disappointed in Lala. But she thinks she's doing a good thing. And the men, if you notice a lot of men have this perspective, not to take away from the women who might have this perspective too. You're welcome to it. But there's a lot of men, Andy Cohen and such, that are like, oh, Lala's just the breakout star. She's just, oh, it's her season. To what? To look like a hypocrite? To look ridiculous? To go flip-flop anonymous? Huh? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> right? It would have been magic if all the women would have stuck together and been like, who the frick do you think you are? You know, you lint liquor. If they would have just called out the men and been like, you lint liquors. How dare you roll up on us? That would have been great. Uh, she does. Uh, Marzia, yeah, she does. She shows, uh, Ariana does show um, a lot of um, strength and self-control. And it is very impressive where the Tom's lack in any kind of self-control. Tom Sandoval lacks any kind of emotional control at the big old age of 62. He cannot control his emotions or his boner. I think that's what's happening. She unfortunately has, you know, this is what, what's his face, the producer and the rest of them. What's his name? What's that guy's name, you guys? Alex Basket Case, Alex Bers Baskins, Baskin Robbins. Um, this is the narrative they're trying to go with. This is what they want. And they were like, hi, Lala, we're going to need you to do this. And she needs a job. And I, I would like to see her admit that too. I don't think she can. But you would think if they would come together like the cast of Friends, or at least, at least the women and say, listen, you're going to have to fire all of us women because we're not doing this. We're not going to look ridiculous. We're not going to go against our own gender. The When you're a storyteller, okay, <laughs> things need to make sense. Characters, the, the shows we love, we love because the characters always make the decisions that we expect the character to make. Like even if they're the wrong decisions, they're still uh, rooted in true to who they are. This is not true to who these people are. I make the example of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I know Joss Whedon is problematic and I hate that for them, but I love the show. There were many other writers and the cast and the actors. And what's great about those characters is that most fans love them. They're beloved to this day because we will watch those characters do anything. I've heard people say, we'll watch them go grocery shopping because we know Willow's going to Willow, Oz is going to Oz, Buffy's going to Buffy, Cordelia's going to Cordelia, Xander's going to Xander, Angel's going to Angel. Now we've jumped the shark with whatever this is. So we have invested in these people. We think, you know, oh, this is how Lala would be. And now you can't tell us something for all these seasons and then go, just kidding. Power to the Toms. I feel bad for them. It, it, it's just going against their characters. It, it, it's, it's a disservice to the audience. You're, you're, expect, you're acting like we're stupid. Like we don't deserve 
you know, a better show because you want to try to save one dude. Uh, it just, it doesn't make any sense. Hopefully that comparison I made made sense to you guys, but I was rooting for the women too. We were all rooting for you. Yep. Lala flip flappers production fail. Mm -hmm. Yavane, Lala flip flappers. I was rooting for the women to band together. That's what we were expecting. Yes. And Giles is going to Giles. But this, we don't know what to do with this because we're like, why? It doesn't make sense. And like Judge Judy says, if it doesn't make sense, it's probably not true. And I understand it's reality television and it's entertainment, but it doesn't have to be this far off. It doesn't have to completely jump the shark, completely go against what's good about it. For what? <sighs> Trey frustrating, you guys. Yes. Lala, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. Yes, because they're not being authentic. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for, Vic Star. It doesn't make sense because they're not being authentic. You see Ariana being authentically hurt, authentically herself, authentically putting up boundaries. You see Katie. Katie is like sometimes apologetically and sometimes unapologetically just who she is. She's like, oh, you feel bad for Joe? I don't. I'll start everyone on fire. We expect Katie to say that. Whether you like Katie or not, Katie's going to Katie. Lala is going to one minute be like, oh, disengage. Boom, Lauren from Utah, you know, G-U-N fingers. And then the next minute be like, mm, I just want the softer side of Sears. Mm, I feel bad for you, Tom. And then literally in the next breath, be like, oh, I can't believe he'd do that. But I can't believe she'd do that. You're all hypocrites. All the while, she's the biggest hypocrite. Because Sheena's kind of Sheena-ing, other than this want for her. But even Sheena's character, it's frustrating, but we do know that. It can kind of go back to the fact that Sheena really wants attention, which she's always wanted. And she wants the approval of Lisa Vanderpump. And Lisa Vanderpump pulled her aside and said, oh, you must be friends with Tom because oh, he will hurt himself. OK, he's already hurting everybody else. He's hurting our ears with the karaoke singing. He's hurting the show. He hurt Ariana. He's hurting his friends. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Lala's confused. She doesn't know who she is. And me and uh, Ryan Bailey talked about this. I don't think Lala knows who she is. I really don't. And I think this show only confuses it more and confuses her. Uh, okay. So uh, so that happens. And this Ziggy's thing was like, oh, so much was going on. Um, uh, then we have, okay. We already talked about him going on the date. Oh, I love how Anne, we kind of skipped over this in the beginning, but Anne wants, uh, <laughs> she's like, Ariana, can I have the job? Are you looking for an assistant? Can you hire me? Please get me away from Tom Sandoval. Please, please, please. He almost killed the dog. Please, please. And Ariana's like, sure, you can be in the running. But she's like, I want to save Anne, but I don't think I can take her. Um, it, it would, you know, justice for Anne but it's now too messy because she has worked for him and she needs to be able to really trust her assistant. Not that she couldn't trust Anne, but it's like she doesn't want anyone that Sandoval would feel comfortable contacting, you know. So maybe if Anne, maybe get a restraining order against Sandoval so he can't contact you and then reach out to Ariana about being the assistant. But poor Anne, poor Anne. Oh, I finally found a picture I had been looking for of Joe when she was there. She's like, hey, hey, hey. Mm, short Joseph needs to go home. Joseph's getting bullied. Mm. Okay. So then we have this. I don't even know what this is. Another scene with Lala and Schwartz and Tom Sandoval and James. And they show up and Schwartz is like, I ordered a real cocktail, but then I'm going to order a mocktail. Stop pretending you're sober, sir. Please stop pretending you're sober. Again. Ugh, so annoying. Um, so Lala's like, oh, is, is Sandoval coming? Yeah, he's coming. And then they make a joke about not having sex yet. And Lala says, Schwartz, I would break your dick off. And then he's like, ha, ha sorry, server. You had to hear that. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. Um, they talk about, what did they even talk about? This was just so, such a crazy whatever's happening here. Um, Sandoval comes and he brings a purse 
Sandoval, can you stop appropriating our women culture when clearly you hate us? I need you to stop taking all the things that we've created and made nice and stealing them like the thief you are. Stop appropriating our womanhood when clearly you have no respect for us. Anyone else, fine. Any other man that respects women, you can carry a purse. I don't care. I don't have anything wrong with that. I think uh, purses are genderless. However, you, sir, don't know how to treat women. You clearly don't like women, so you can't have our stuff. Give us our nail polish back. Give us our purses back. Give us our guy liner back. <sighs> this man, this man shows up and he's like, <laughs> It's like, what's in the bag? What's in the bag? It's a head. It's a human head. I think he's carrying around allegedly human heads. Okay. <laughs> so he shows up and they're like, wow, Tom, you look so like fresh. And normally you're just like, oh, and you have a hat and you're just like, eh. and he's like, no, I feel, I feel good. I've been doing some stuff. And James is like, yeah, I love how James threw in like a, a dig. He was like, yeah, working out's great. You know, therapy is great. Maybe try therapy. Yeah. Give us our stuff back. You can't have our stuff. You can't take our things when you, you disrespect us and you are an asshole. Yeah. He's carrying around the porn tapes. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> oh my God. That's so sad because it's the tapes that he recorded without women's consent. <sighs> His therapy, whatever their therapy is. So he's going to do this screamo therapy. And so he's like, Lala. Lola, I like your nails. Oh, your nails are good. Oh, and she's like, oh my God, thanks. Thanks. And he goes, I'm doing this thing with this scream therapy tomorrow. And I was wondering if you want to come over. And Lala's like, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Can I sleep on it? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to get everyone, you know, to talk to me and be friends with me. So to piss off Ariana. Yeah. James seemed like he didn't want to be there. Lala brought up the, what happened at Ziggy's and she's like, I felt kind of bad for you. Lala, stop it. Would you stop it? Would you? You're enabling him. You realize that, right? I am about to, I'm going to call Randall. Randall, hi. Yeah. I feel bad for you. Yeah. Lala's saying a lot of things about you on the show. I feel bad for you. I mean, how would you feel? You told us he was your ex. Oh, Tom's like, thanks, thanks. Any, anyone, Billy Lee, Lala, any of these people, especially women, that make excuses for this man, you're only making him worse. You're making the monster grow. You're making it worse for the next gal. You're making it worse for everybody. Stop it. He can be held accountable. He's a grown man. He's like 80. He literally can be held accountable. He's not going to break. Ugh, it's so annoying. <laughs> annoying. Come on. Oh. <laughs> so anyways, spoiler alert. The next day, guess who shows up at Scream Therapy? Lala comes in wearing, um, I, I think she was going hunting, but on the way to the hunting party, she was going to stop at the club. So she was like club hunting. She was, I don't, maybe she was going to like a big buck hunter club because she had super cute heel shoes, like really high heel shoes, super cute. And then I think it was, let's see if I got a picture of it here, but it was some kind of camouflage, yeah, camouflage jacket, okay? But I think I have a picture of her shoes somewhere. Um, well, hold on, I got, no, I got a picture of Sandoval's purse. Okay, stop it. Those are ours. And also men that are nice to women get to carry them. But if you are not, you don't get the privilege of the purse. You got to put it in your pockets. You got to put your phone by your balls. Take the risk, sir. Okay. I thought I did have a picture of her, but she shows up at Sandoval's house and she opens the door and we see him doing this. He was orgasming. So he was just thinking about having sex with Rachel Raquel. And he was like, <laughs> can you imagine? Oh, my God. That was totally his old face, his sex face. Every woman that's ever had sex with him was probably, like, triggered, PTSD, full. It was so cringy. Was that guy going to smother him with the pillow? Why did he have the pillow next to him? 
So the, the, the therapy guy's like talking to him, like, let it out, breathe, bro, breathe. It's like, he, you just need some talk therapy. You need to process your feelings. What happened to a little bit of cognitive behavioral therapy? Can we go old school on this shit? The guy screams enough. He's always screaming at women. He doesn't need to be laying on the floor wearing, you know, sleepy goggles with a guy about to smother him, even though I was like, oh, okay, okay, maybe this is going to get interesting. And then he never smothered him, wrong cup. And I was like, boring, bring a book, nobody cares. So, yeah, his toes curled, so gross. So It was so cringy. So he's like, oh, oh, and, oh, I can't even do it. I can't even recreate it. And Lala's like, hi. This man screams all the time. He's always like, I don't want to scream at women. Oh, Katie. He clearly has a boner in this picture. Okay. Poor St. Louis. They're always dragged into this. He's always wearing some STL. I think, I don't know. Where are my St. Louis care bear? Where are my St. Louis representatives? Can you guys like write a letter to city hall or something and get some kind of ordinance where he can't do this to you guys anymore? It's so embarrassing. So, he doesn't get smothered. He's laying on a towel. He's screaming. And then cut to his DR. And he's like, that was like a oh, sex. Oh, God. Oh, my God. We knew he got angry boners. We knew it. We knew it. We knew it. Thank you, Courtney, you sweetie. Yeah, the scene was horrible, Irene. It really was. It was horrible. And he's like, oh, God, it felt so good, man. Oh, I got to go clean up. And then he had to change his pants, allegedly. Everything I say is true, except for the parts that are false. So he changed his pants and then he's like, want to go outside? Want me to make you a dumpling latte? Lala, he's, he's trying to get you like you got Ariana. Don't drink the dumpling lattes. You're going to be stuck with him for 10 years in a house while he's cheating on you while you mourn the death of loved ones. Run. So he makes her a dumpling latte. Oh, they go sit outside and they talk about how they were never friends. Yeah, there's a reason you weren't friends. You have nothing in common. You don't like each other. You've always hated her. You slut shamed her. You told her she was a bully. You stuck up for Rachel Raquel. She hated you. You're supposed to hate each other. That's okay. I don't care. Why do they have to be friends? And Lala's like, yeah, whatever you did to Ariana, you know, that's your business. I don't, do I agree with it? No. Is it right? No. Are you a horrible person? Yeah. But am I going to try to make a friendship with a horrible person who treats women like shit? Yeah, I am. I am. Because the producers are saying I have to, allegedly. So, yeah, I'm going to sit out here in my hunting wear, okay? Do you have any any big bucks around here? Any deers? Any doe? Deer? Female deer? No? Okay. Let me know if you see anything because I'm prepared. Um, and then there were lots of times where Tom was like, Lala? And she was like, I'm right here. And he was like, oh, I'm sorry. You're wearing camouflage. I couldn't. I don't know where you went. So then she's like, I just, I've been like processing a lot of things and things have been really hard for me. And like, sometimes I get it out on my Amazon lives where I'm selling shit as an influencer. Like this jacket, you can give two for 20 right now if you click my Amazon affiliate link. <sighs> but otherwise, I don't want to be hard anymore, girl. Tell it to the therapist, not the problematic men who made you hard in the first place. She's like... I don't trust straight men. Girl, nobody does. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? We watch Dateline. We know. Yes, that's, that's actually a very normal response. Until they prove that they can be trusted, be leery. Leery and weary. And she was like, I just have to. No, you don't have to. No, they have to prove themselves, especially not the cyst ones like he says he is the new thing is that you know as a cis male um did you say cyst is your voice yell do whatever you feel entitled to do but as a cis as a straight male if i was a woman i could do that if i was a gay male i could do that but as a straight male if i raise my voice it's wrong <sighs> lala no no why can't they just coexist on the show as castmates and they're at the same parties? Why do we have to get a one-on-one -on -one friendship from them when we never had it before? Why are we trying to reinvent the wheel? They're not meant to be friends. They never have been. Okay. <sighs> Ella says, uh, I would have said no thanks to the dumpling latte, right? Oh, gotta be careful. 
I would not have showed up for the breathing cringe either. Yep. Blah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they have a moment and she's like, I'm going to try if you're going to try. And he's like, I'm going to try too. He's not going to try. He doesn't care. Again, Lala was admitting more of <clears throat> and being vulnerable. Tom wasn't. Tom was like, I'm, I'm glad you finally see y'all. That it's, I'm not that bad. Uh. You are though. Like you legit are. And they have this crappy scene where she's like, I'm really, I'm going to give you a chance. Oh, okay, great. Can't wait till he screws you over. Cause he will. That'll be fun. And then we'll all, are you going to have him send an, sign an NDA? <laughs> he probably still hangs out with Randall. Oh, and he's just sitting there like, you, you clearly saw that I scream therapy now. So I don't scream at women. I still think about women when I'm screaming. Ah, why did I scream into a pillow? Ah, dude didn't even brush his teeth for this. I guarantee. I guarantee it. Like the men's warehouse, bitch. He didn't brush them teeth. He just, you know, he just one of them people that's like, you take my morning breath. Oh, gross. Ew. Allegedly. Okay. Oh, all right. So that happens. We have another tasting of the sandwiches. Something about her. We're back. This time it's decorated. And we have a lot of haters. James and Lala are like, oh, why are we back? I tasted the sandwich last year. I had the sandwich the year before. Now I will say they're not wrong. Uh, unfortunately, something about her, you know, still tied up with things in WeHo and uh, some kind of permits and shit. So they have a little party. James makes a joke about Schwartz loving sloppy joes and everybody dies laughing. So we're able to go in something about her now that it is um, finished. I wish they would have just done like a tea or a cocktail hour or something or had a party in there. But you made them try the same sandwiches. And yeah, they were just going to hate. So it's like, then why'd they show up? Mm -hmm. uh, Caprice in Greek. <laughs> I think it was to enjoy the Nancy Myers decor. Yes, the rom-com decor. Alex. I think that's why. But it was boring. Without James' joke, it would have been boring. Then they went over to Sir, because Lisa Vanderpump couldn't come, to the sandwich tasting because she was too busy sitting at a table in her own restaurant where, I don't know if you noticed, but there was a woman who was sitting behind uh, Lisa and Ken who was like holding her phone like this. And you just, like everyone there was filming them. <laughs> so Lisa and Ken sit down. Ariane and Katie bring the sandwiches over and they're like, hey, Lisa, Ken, try these. And Ken's like, oh, I'm napping. Ken's like, hello, oh, hello, Ariana. Did you know that Sandoval had Raquel over in the hot tub while you were, that was last season. Okay, wake me up when you need me to say something else. So Ken, Lisa was force feeding Ken sandwiches. He didn't even know, okay? And they're like, oh, the, sand the bread's going to be fresh obviously, and hot and all that stuff every day. And Lisa's like, oh, God, they haven't opened up their sandwich shop yet. You need to open up that now. It's beginning to look like Tom's. And Tom's, um, not Tom Tom, but the uh, Schwartz, Schwartz and Skeezies. Oh, you've got to open it up. <sighs> so they're eating sandwiches, and Lisa's like, oh, this is delicious. Oh, mm, I can't feel anything on my lips. I just got some. Lisa's lips are luscious. She must have just got a fresh filling because she was like, oh, oh, oh. Mm. Here comes, or that's when, um, thank you, Pamela. Tom needs some new flying monkeys. Pamela says, thank you for the super chat. Um, so that's when Katie is like, oh, guess what, Lisa? Um, Tom Schwartz, I found out recently uh, that 12 years ago, he made out with Sheena when we were together. Isn't that crazy? And Lisa's like, what? Hey, Tom made out with Sheena? Oh, Sheena, no. And Ken's like, Tom had Raquel over in the hot tub when Ariana was mourning her. Oh, no, okay. Oh, wake me up later. And then he went back to bed and... Then here comes Tom, like, I brought you some espresso martinis. It was Tom Schwartz. You know, he's like, huh, here. Huh. And then he spills it all over, has a panic attack. And 
<laughs> Lisa's like, oh, so glad you were never a server. You're horrible. You're a horrible, horrible person. Oh, there you go. Oh, he spilled everywhere. Everywhere he's spilling. <laughs> um, Artist, thank you so much for the super chat. You're the best, Jillian. Looking forward to your commentary on the new season of Big Brother. I know it's coming up. Not too long now. Um, whenever it starts, looking forward to your commentary on the new season of Big Brother, whenever it starts. I think you did talk to text. And I love that, artist. I love the devil. Um, thank you so much for the super chat. So uh, Tom spilling. And Lisa's like, hey, Tom, I heard that you met out with Sheena. And Tom's like, oh, Katie, why? God, why would you say that? We literally, didn't we just work this out? Why would you bring that up? And I'm thinking, you brought it up. Katie would have never known. You brought it to the table. You told Lala. Lala told Katie. Katie told Sheena. Sheena pretended you just stuck your tongue down her throat and cornered her in a bar, which might be problematic, Mr. Blackout, sir. And now Katie's telling Lisa, who's telling you. So the originator of the problem is you, Sandoval. You never had to bring this up. You never. And again, Sheena, the Toms are not your friend. Why would he do that to you if he was your friend? Why would he bring that up for 12 years and knowing that he's not going to have to deal with it from Katie because Katie's like, I expect that from him. He's such an idiot. You're going to have to deal with it. Again, the Toms aren't your friend. They're not your friend. These guys, they don't like you. They're trying to pass off all their bad juju and all the their diseased weans, allegedly, onto the ladies. But the fact that Schwartz was like, oh, why? Why, Katie? Why'd you bring that up? You brought it up. You brought it to the show. 12 years later, you weirdo. We knew you were a makeout, you know, slut. But uh, uh, anyway, so then he's like, we just talked about it. And literally, they're like, rewind 10 minutes. They talked about it in the something about her kitchen. And she's just going to be over it. And they were roasting up Schwartz. Uh, they were like, oh, Schwartz, you really dropped the bag. Ariana's like, you did. You dropped the bag. And Katie goes, mm, yeah, now you just have sloppy Joe. Mm, bummer. And so then Schwartz heads over to Brock, who's like, hey, what's up? Hey, Schwartz, what's going on? Now, I was just thinking about my OG. Okay, let me tell you something. Nee? Some people say, was it gay? And I say, no, nee, because let me tell you again, there was a koala. And there was two dicks and two vaginas. And one of the dicks was mine. Okay? See, not gay. Maybe a little gay, but not that gay. Okay? And we're like, Brock, nobody cares. The orgy. He's still trying to talk himself out of the orgy. And Schwartz immediately, Mr. Victim, he does this all the time. Oh, my God. I need a drink. <gasps> they totally roasted me. They totally came at me. They attacked me. Oh, my God. Just like Joe thought she was being attacked. Because she thought she heard something from far away and was like, la, 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 la. Schwartz is like, oh, they attacked me. They held me down and they they pulled on my nose hairs and they just, oh, they told me the truth. It was horrible. And Brock's like, oh, what happened? Was it, did you get in your orgy with, with another deed and you didn't know it? No, okay. No, it wasn't that. Okay. Was there a koala there? And Schwartz is like, there was no koala. Was there a kangaroo? No, there was no kangaroo. How about a boomerang? Nay, no? okay, I just checking, just checking. Okay, what's going on? What's going on? Okay, go ahead. And um, Schwartz is like, yeah, Katie's just pff, talking about the Sheena thing. Brock's like, hey, that, pff, that was forever ago. There was when I was allegedly, you know, doing uh, what was I doing? I was with doing a dude. I wasn't doing a dude. I was there was two girls in one cup. No, it wasn't the cup, but there was a cup. Okay. Okay, they, I didn't tell that part of the story, but there was a cup. So then Brock decides to mention, okay, didn't want to say this, but I'm definitely going to say it. Okay, Sheena's going to be really pissed, but uh, here's what happened. Katie is banging your friend, mate. Don't let her give you a hard time, but some kiss 12 years ago when you were with her and lied to her with my wife, okay, because that's, don't worry about it, because she's she's with with your best friend. And I'm thinking, Tom Sandoval? Katie was with Tom Sandoval? And Schwartz is like, what? I hate to do this to you, mate, but yeah, she was, uh, Katie, uh, 
Sheena was checking her locations on the phone. Yeah, she's called everyone's location and she just obsessively stays awake all night. And she's like, Ariana's here, Katie's there, Sheena's here. Hey, that's that's her. Brock's next to me. Summer Moon's over here. She's just checking. It's a, it's a healthy thing she does, okay? But uh, And she saw that uh, Katie was with uh, Max Boner. Boners. And I'm like, who? Oh, Max Boyan. So apparently... Schwartz is really good friends with Max, who was on like one season of Vanderpump, was a total douche nozzle, and with that other fitness guy, and I think he's the one that was like hooking up with Dana. Apparently, after Ziggy's, Katie with her <laughs> over-the-knee boots, uh, they went out after Ziggy's, and they after party, after the party, and he was chasing after Joe, Joseph! Joseph and she's like no everyone's mean to me no one understands me um Katie they all went out and Katie and Max went back to Katie's and then Sheena was like I was just looking I don't normally look it's not like how many people's location do I have 56 I just know 56 people's locations okay let's see Alex Baskin Robbins you are here yeah you're right here okay so you're asking me the question so I know where you are Okay, Rob is currently hanging a television in Big Bear, as he should. Um, yeah, just have everyone's location. It's really not a big deal. How does Sheena have everyone's locations? How? I thought you have to actively share your locations. Now, I know some of them do for safety, but wh why is Max sharing his location with Sheena? Because you literally, you have to, like, grant them access. The only, per the only person I share my location with is my husband. And he shares his with me. I, I, why does she have 56 people's locations, Sheena? Oh, my God. Alex, thank you for the super chat. Alex says, I hope Schwartz cries. I've been waiting 10 years for him to get a taste of his own medicine. <sighs> Girl, me too. Me too. So Schwartz's face drops like, <gasps> what? Max? Like my buddy? Like my penis, bro? Like our dude? Bro code? Did, they did the P in the V? Or did they did the the P in the B? What did the P in the M? Did they do all of it? And Brock's like, hey, mate, I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, didn't let it give you a hard time. You knew bitches be bitches. And she was out there banging your best mate. So I just want you to know. Because I don't want I was thinking about it all day. I was waiting to tell you. And now you knew. So you need. Now you need, you need, you need. When you need, then you need. And then you can't do anything else. Okay? But again, there were two vaginas in my orgy. There was two dicks, but one was mine. And Schwartz is like, please, Brock, please. I don't want to hear about your orgy right now. I can't process this. He looked so devastated that Katie would do that. Now I will say, Max is Trey Gross. And from when he was on the show, I don't think he deserves a hookup with Katie, but good for Katie. Whatever. For some reason, the Vanderpump people think that guy is <laughs> worth the sex. And that's on them. I don't think Schwartz has a case to be mad at Katie or to even question her because guess what? They're not together. So really, Max owes Schwartz more than Katie does because throughout their whole marriage, all Schwartz did was disrespect Katie and cheat on her. And he said, I basically went out and made out with all of these people because I, when I was mad at her, I acted like an asshole and I would go out and just make out with random people and get super drunk and disrespect our marriage. So you disrespected your vows. So Katie doesn't owe you anything. Now, Max, you can be mad at because if he's supposed to be your best friend, he should not be sleeping with your ex-wife. That is some Joe hairdresser stuff. Okay. So that's not your friend. I'm sure they'll make up and they'll you good? You good? You good? You good? I'm good. I'm good. And then they'll just repress it down like these problematic men do only to take it out on a woman. Allegedly. Thank you, Melissa, for the super chat. Rob's hanging the TV in Big Bear. He is. Or saving Jax from the lake. One of the two. All right. So um, then Sheena comes up and Sheena's like, okay, so Tom Sandoval walks in with, um, what's her name? T. They just went bowling. T's like, I'm a singer. Hi, I'm 25. What's up? Just trying to get some uh, get some followers. What's going on here? You know, she doesn't like Tom Sandy butt like that. No way. No, she's too hot. There's, there, however, his new girlfriend, I thought 
she's got to be using him too. Hopefully prayers up that he's being used anyways. Um, Ariana's like, I gotta get a water. And Sheena's like, I'll go with you. I'll go with you right now. So they go up to the bar and say, or, um, T is there with Brock and Sheena finds out that Brock has spilled the beans on Katie. And she's like, why'd you do that, Brock? Oh. And Brock's like, eh, I just told him you were going to tell him. I know you wanted to tell him, but I wanted to tell him because I'm on the show too. So I thought, me? Sheena gets to tell people stuff all the time. It's Brock's time to tell. I can't just wear Speedos. That can't be my only thing saying, when can we get a nanny? Even though I don't allegedly have a job. But I could just watch the fucking kid. But nee, nee, me, nee, me. Nee. I'm just going to complain about a mother. I can't just complain about your mother and wear Speedos and allegedly not work. I got to do something. So I tell them, okay? G's up, hose down, bros up, hose blow. Yee. She's like, I can't believe you did that. I'm trying to make get better with Katie. This is horrible, Brock. And he's like, listen, get your head on. He said, he said some Australian stuff that I did not understand. He was like straight speaking Australian. I'm going to need my Australian friends to um, translate. I had to rewind it like five times. I thought he was going to say like, get your head out of your ass. And I was going to go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't talk to your wife like that. Yuck, yuck. But he was like, you need to get your head on. You need to get your heat. Your heat. Where's your heat? And I'm like, what's he talking about your head for? I'm going to need that translated. If somebody can, you know, tell me what he meant by that. And she's like, oh, he's like, oh, I'll go home. I'm like, are you threatening to leave <laughs> the bar if Sheena doesn't stop talking about it? It was really, really bad. Like, it, <laughs> I was like, Brock, this is, again, not your episode. This is not Brock's season. Yeah, he said, the dingo ate your baby. He was like, get you. You gotta, you better get your head. Nee, nee, Sheena, it's my time. I told him, cause he's my friend, kind of, sorta. Of. I don't know what a friend is since I came to the states. You guys all have sex with each other and lie, but I told him. So Sheena's like, I'm so mad at you. He's like, I'm so mad at you. She's like, well, I'm more mad at you. He's like, well, I'm the most mad at you. And then she leaves, or she stands there, and Ariana's like, Hi, who are you? How, and she's like, I'm T. Hi. And Ariana goes, oh, hi, I'm Ariana. Nice to meet you. You've probably heard things about me that aren't true. This Ariana, I was like, oh, can we get Ariana to just, if she has to film with Sandy, Sandy Butt, Sandoval, um, can't Ariana just be there to like cock block? I would love a season of just cock blocking just fun cock blocks, you know, getting to say these things like Ariana would be like the superhero protecting young women from a history, you know, or a future, I should say with this 41 year old narcissist, as she said, she was like, Oh, Hey, I'm yeah. How old are you? And T goes 25. Cause when you're 25, you're excited to say you're 25. So she was super excited. She's like, I'm 25. And Aaron is like, mm, that tracks, that tracks. Um, just so you know, babe, uh, you're way too good for him. And you probably don't want to waste your time with a 41-year-old narcissist. Okay, babe? You know that, right? And he's like, yeah, I, I know. I know. I, I yeah. This out, uh, He was like doing this dance. I think, I don't know. I think I saw my grandpa do it one time. I think it's like a moon stroll or a moon glide. Ariana's was like, it's the moonwalk. Yeah, he does that. He thinks he's Corey Feldman. Did he grab his penis or what he thinks is a penis? Yeah, he did. Yeah, T, you, you don't want that, right? That's going to be embarrassing to your young friends, your Gen Z friends. They're not going to like that. Does anyone do that on TikTok? No, I've never seen that dance on TikTok. Exactly. Exactly, honey. You're too good for that. Okay, bye-bye. And then Sheena's just like, oh my God, <laughs> let's go. And she is like, I'm going to hear from Katie. We got to go. We got to go. I mean, Sheena's already stressed. Oh my God. It was so great watching Ariana uh, interact with T and then T's just like leaning up against the bar like, wow, I feel like my whole life, I, I, I've i never, that's some wisdom. Ariana bestowed upon T this ultimate wisdom. While Sandoval is taking the dump, you know, he public dumps. She should have, she should have mentioned that. Listen, not only does he dress like that, dance like that and think he can sing, and as a cheater, oh, P.S., he cheated on me while we I was mourning my grandmother in my house with my friend. <laughs> Anyways, have a fun day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. It was so fantastic. I'm like, I could watch that forever. It was similar to when Jackson 
Sandoval were going at each other when I actually thought maybe it would last. I'm like, I could watch that for a half hour. Those two guys just fighting with each other because they're essentially the same person, but just saying those things to each other. Sadly, it didn't last. Thank you, Jay, for the super chat. Uh, did you see Ariana is going to be? Yes, we talked about that early in the stream. The new Love Island host. Ariana haters are see, Oh, they're mad. They are mad. And I think that that is probably a big reason why, you know, the producers know that Ariana and Katie have outgrown the show. And it's very clear um, because who wouldn't? Uh, and they're not going to have her. So they're like, let's villainize her. And we're going to have to, you know, keep old Sandy, but cause what's he going to do? You know, what's he going to do? The army show part two, um, and cry while he's doing outdoor dumps again. So they're like, well, we have to, um, fix his image. So we'll just throw the women under the bus. Cause who cares? Who cares? But yes, thank you, Jay. We're very excited and uh, very happy for Ariana. I could watch that forever. I could watch her following around Sandoval the minute he goes to dump because you know he takes dumps on dates the dude is disgusting and um hi what's your name how old are you oh 23 okay um yeah one time he let our dog eat um little like wood chopsticks type thing yeah he locked her in a bedroom for hours and she had to have surgery that cost six thousand dollars that he didn't pay for he also cheated on me when our other dog died okay bye have fun see you later bye, -bye. <laughs> you look cute babe you look real cute cute babe so then ariana and uh sheena go sit back at the table there's a table of them sheena's pissed she's like and here comes brock and Katie has no idea at this point that now it's been outed that she hooked up with Max. Because she's like, well, how would they know I hooked up with Max? They weren't there. Get Sheena off of your locator, Katie. Katie's like, what's up? What's going on? They have their other friends there. I think cute Logan was there. And Katie had like a guy friend next to her. And Sheena's like, tell him. Tell him, Brock. Tell him what you did. Tell him what you did, Brock. Tell him. Brock's like, what? Uh, what? What? Me? Uh, nee, okay, fine. I did. I told, I told Schwartz that he, he banged Max, his friend, because I think he should knee. If his girlfriend's running a train through his restaurant, like you said you were going to, I think he should knee. So I told him. Okay? She was like, I have nothing to do with this. Don't ask me. This is none of my business. And Katie's like, what? What, what, what are you talking about? Katie, we know, because she just got her on the phone. She sits in bed at night instead of S and my D. She's looking up who's D you S and. And so that's what happens now that we're married. I got a full on rager in the cage. And she's like, let me check to see where Katie is. So she's looking morning, noon, and night. You were there. Okay. Katie, you, technically, she could see how long Max lasted. It wasn't long. I don't know where how that accent just broke right there. <laughs> so Katie, Katie's like, huh? And she was like, I, I was just checking because I just, I, I wanted to make sure you got home safe. Okay. And it, it's, I checked in the morning and he was still there. So we know. Okay. But I wasn't going to say anything. Brock. Brock said, well, I think he has right to knee. Kai, is you out there getting mad at him for something that happened 12 years ago? You're banging his mate. His beast mate. The beast. It's the beast mate. He is. He did it. He could be dead. What? Katie's like, and then she, Lala, what the, f Lala, what? Max Boyens? Max, yes, Lala, we kind of feel the same way. He's trash, but whatever. Max? What? You didn't tell me? Oh my God, this is the season if you didn't tell Lala, she was just on her podcast talking about how Stassi didn't tell her about her pregnancy. And she found it on Instagram. Ugh. So Lala's like, oh my God, I am so done with this. You guys are just liars. Okay, I can't deal with you liars, even though I am lying too. Ariana, P.S. I did go meet up with Tom Sandoval at your house and I didn't tell you because I didn't think I was going to go. Okay, but it's different when I do it. And we're going to work on our relationship. And Ariana's like, what? What, babe? What's going on? Yeah, we just, we, well, we went out for smoothies with Schwartz and then he showed up and then he asked me to do some scream therapy. And, and Ariana's like, oh, really? Because then I was at the vet, the emergency vet, with our dog, Maya, who almost died. Because he is so irresponsible and I can't trust him with shit. 
And Lala's like, well, I mean, I think you should probably like move out of the house. You have enough money to get an apartment, babe. <sighs> Just, Lala, Lala, Lala. No, you had to leave Randall's house because it wasn't your house. Okay. But this is half, this is her investment. This is her money. It's very different, baby girl. Very different. And you should be understanding of that if that's your friend. Oh my God. And again, Katie's the only one, you know, standing by Ariana as Lala's like, I don't know. I just kind of feel bad for him. I can just imagine Katie and Ariana are just like, get me out of here. Get, check, please. Thank, thank you. Oh my God. This, this is really sad. This is so sad how easily we're all bought and paid for. This is, wow. Okay. We're older. This should be better. It's not. So <laughs> just a total, literal, sendable, public shit show um, with Katie being called out for Max. And Lala's like, that's it. Me and my bodysuit and my jacket I'm wearing over my bodysuit and my Hair that's always back like this, even though it does look really nice, Lala. I'm leaving. You guys are liars. You don't keep your word and you're not consistent. And I know all these things can be said about me, but mostly they can be said about you. Okay. I'd love you all. But Sheena, you're checking people's locations. Katie, if you're having sex with Max, you're not even telling me. Ariana, you're saying you can't move out of your house and you can. Okay. Schwartz and Sheena, you're making out and not telling me. <sighs> Me, 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 me. And then they give Lala this edit like she's the voice of reason. So I saw people on Twitter like, oh, my God, Lala's like the voice of reason. Whose reason? It ain't mine. <laughs> yes, Judy, it's her investment. It's her money. It, she didn't do BJs for PJs. No offense, all offense. She put her money into this home. Now, shout out to, to Lala, who has since bought a Valley house. She owns a Palm Springs house. I love that for you, girl. You are killing it continue to kill it, but not at any cost. The cost of you like having to do whatever this is the season on the show, because I don't know if you guys let me know what you think. I don't think this show is going to last if it stays like this. I mean, it's just so everything is so disingenuous and inauthentic and it is, it's such a mess. I don't like it. But yeah, you had to leave Randall's house because it was his house. You weren't on it. You didn't put any money into it. Ariana put her money into this. She's not just going to walk away because some dum-dum who doesn't even know how to take care of a dog is like, I want to buy it. Uh, I think it's worth like, uh, I don't know, uh, like seven pairs of glitter pants. Uh, I'm going to go on tour with my karaoke band. Uh, I'm going to pay it off. He owes his mom $250,000. He didn't have the home appraised. He took money out of the equity to pay for his bar that they say is failing. So why would she trust anything, any offer this man makes? It just, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I know you guys, uh, Judy says, I'm over this season. Yep. Ariana just bought a house in the hills with a view to the Hollywood signs. So shout out to Lala. But I feel like they're literally, they continue to try to make us, they're, they're gaslighting us. They are trying to, whatever production, whatever idea they had for this Captain Save a Sandoval Ho season, it doesn't make sense. And like I said, if it doesn't make sense, it's probably not true. Just like the Judge Judy. All right, I'm going to read some comments and then we'll wrap it up because we're almost at two hours. You guys have been fantastic. I knew this was going to be a long roast and recap because it was a meaty episode and it was so many times I was screaming like, what? I had to pause it I, between Schwartz and Sandoval and Joe and Lala and Brock just being all kinds of wrong about this Max thing. Katie, please do not think you have to answer to Schwartz. He disrespected your marriage, your relationship, your trust for so long. You owe him nothing. Pay him dust. Okay. Oh my goodness. Shawnee says this episode set me off. Everyone gets a red flag. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does seem very contrived, very contrived. And just, mm -mm. no, thank you. Exactly. Lala never, Vic Star saying, put money toward uh, Randall's home. No. Mm -hmm. I wonder how long until Tim loses the house. Oh, that'll be fun to watch. That'll be fun. It, it's probably in foreclosure now. You know, he claims he's the only one paying for it. Oh, girl. Um, no mention of the crossover with Dylan. Uh, is that who that was? I don't 
oh my god Annette I haven't watched Below Deck in quite a few seasons so I didn't know who that was was that the person that was sitting next to Katie he was handsome I think I remember his lips um Simone says I haven't seen Lala do anything different than usual well maybe she's all maybe she's always had this energy Alex says Lala sold her soul her soul. Um, uh, Layla C says Dana does doesn't care about Max um, and who sleeps with him. A lot of people are grasping at straws to compare this Max BS with anything those nasty Toms do. Yeah, they're trying to vilify the women rather than just have a season where the Toms have fucked up and they have to, uh, you know, go through the consequences of their actions. They have to find their way back into the friend group at a pace that works for everybody else, not one that's bullied or pushed upon us. To use the bully word, I feel like really the cast is being bullied into just forgiving Sandoval when he's not, he doesn't even really know what he's done. Uh, witnesses, Tom's credibility is zero. I hope Ariana rides the wave as long as it lasts. Me too. Kitty Joe says Lala's jealous of Ariana. I mean, that, that's got to play a huge factor because all we hear when talking about Ariana is she's fine. Sheena and Lala have now notoriously said this over and over. She's fine. She makes all these deals. Look at all. They only mention her brand deals. What about her mental health? What about her heart? Because just because she's making money moves, that doesn't mean that the trust issues and the heart and all that, the heart is a lonely hunter. You know, she's still processing this trauma that Tom Sandoval continues to put upon her. I mean, okay. Um, end up says Katie will have sandwiches. Ariana will host Lala and Sheena will move to the Valley. Yeah, I think that's right. I think they are going to move to the Valley. Uh, chicken head PK Neely said, thank you for the super chat says I am waiting for the judge to say what's going to happen to the house. Yes. They're currently in a lawsuit. I am also very curious. Um, Cassandra Perez. Great point. Lala stormed out because she had to somehow make it about her. Heidi says, good point, Jolene. Both Toms prefer women victims. Yep. As Sheena victim, Billy Lee victim, Rachel Raquel victim, now Joe, newest victim. No, they, they really cannot deal with women who are assertive and I'm assertive and I know what I want. Women who are like, no, you're not going to fuck me over. No, I'm not going to feel bad for you. I'm not going to bend. You're being problematic. I'm standing by this. They can't handle that. Butterfly says, I do not understand why the pressure is being put on Ariana, yet no one has said a single word about Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Butterfly. No one understands. Amberlina, I love that quote. Yes. Also, Judge Judy says, if you tell the truth, you don't need to have a good memory. And as you can see, when Tom Schwartz in particular remembers things, he's like, uh, ooh, mm, because he's lying. He doesn't remember because he's lying. Thank you, Courtney. Nana is doing well. She's back in Minnesota and happily she's got to go. She loves doing her laundry after trips. It's, it's her kink. She loves it, but I miss her and um, I'll see her soon. And I think her and I are going to go live probably sometime early next week. Um, Jibbity Bibbity says, Jibbity Bibbity says, everyone hit that like button. Yes. Thank you so much. So yes, Lala owns two homes now. She's doing really well for herself. I mean, those kind of things I want to celebrate for these women. Sheena also owns two homes now. This is really good shit. If they could have just stayed on the path of working with the women. I mean, and a lot of those homes, you know, you can thank your friend Ariana because you got deals off of this horrible thing that happened to her too. So as much as they want to say, she's fine. You guys made a lot of money too. And you bought homes and stuff. <sighs> yep, Ariana went through hell. Let her have her fun. Um, yeah, she didn't go overboard. She stayed at one. I think, I think Lala's house is like the one in the valley, the one in Sherman Oaks. I think they said was like three million. So thank you, Vic Star. Thank you so much. Yes, witnesses, the man is still in Ariana's life. It has to be tough to keep it together. Lots of strength. Mm -hmm. And she knows that he wants her to break. He wants to break her. He wants her to look like the bully that he's painting her out to be. Because that's what these people do. Instead of taking any onus or ownership of their actions and their own behavior, they have to paint someone as a bully. Look what Joe's doing. Look what Schwartz is doing. He's done this to Katie all along. So is Sandoval. And they're doing it to Ariana. But guess what? You're not tricking me. I don't care how these edits are looking. I don't care how many people on, on social media, you know, come at me for it. No, I know what you're doing. Thank you, Pamela. I love your Brock accent, right? I think I got it from Flight of the Concords because I love Brit and uh, Jemaine. 
in deed? Well, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. That's one of my favorite episodes of Flight of the Conquerors. And they're like, he might be deed. They're like, yeah, but what did he do? No, he might be deed. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. <laughs> so it's probably more New Zealand. Um, so yes, they were literally, Dreadful Ruby says, recording music around the time this was filming. Oh, oh yeah, think about that. End of says, if the older casts move on from VPR, do you think James and Allie would lead the new cast? Do you think Rachel would come back? Ooh, I don't think Rachel will come back and I don't think she'll be invited back. Um, I think Allie could lead the next generation of VPR. Definitely. Now the James situation, I'm not sure because we'll see what ends up, you know, transpiring with these allegations floating around about James and, you know, that video was just out of that. I mean, Rachel Raquel took it as like, see, I told you so, um, of when they were at that bar, I forget what it's called. And James was allegedly yelling at Allie. And then you got the stuff that was said by Teddy and Tamara on their podcast. So I don't know. I'm not sure, but I do think Allie could be a lead character to usher in another group. But it, it's hard, though, with VPR because, you know, the magic of it was that these people started as friends. And a lot of other shows have struggled to find that same dynamic and make it work um, because it's come off very created and contrived. Um, so I don't know. But you can clearly tell that a lot of these people on the current cast have outgrown each other. And there's just, if they just would have let this show play out naturally and let people have their feelings on it and not tried to push them certain ways like they did into totally absolving Tom Sandoval and, you know, villainizing Ariana, this could have been a really good season. It really could have. Cassandra, thank you for the super chat, says, in the wise words of Katie, this episode was giving audacity. Yes, Cassandra Perez. It's giving audacity. It's giving audacity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sloppy Joe is a great nickname, Chris says. It really is. <laughs> it really, really is. Um, I'll be recapping the, uh, the Valley probably tomorrow. I haven't even watched it yet. It was hard enough to get through this episode. <laughs> Because, again, I have to pause to yell at the television. But we're at the two-hour mark. You guys are amazing and wonderful, beautiful little pumpkin spice babies. Thank you for letting me geek out and uh, talk all things Vanderpump for my roast and recap. Shout out to all my super chatters. You guys have been so generous and amazing. Melissa, Jen Noel, um, Evelyn, Jill, Chickenhead, Jen again, Valerie, Pamela multiple times, uh, Shawnee, Artis, Alex, Jay, Melissa, um, Nicole. I think I missed it. Hi. Thank you so much, Nicole. I missed your super chat. I'm so sorry. Our super sticker and Cassandra. And also thank you so much to those of you who hit me up on the Venmo cash at PayPal. Um, what a wonderful, kind, generous surprise. So hit that like on your way out. Make sure you subscribe. And if you uh, want to share the channel with your Vanderpump or Bravo loving friends, please do. That always helps as we make our way to 40K. We're so close, kind of. We're like less than 4,000 subscribers, I think, away. So, uh, but I'm not good at math, but we can do it. All right, you guys, I'll be back very soon with another video. Um, and I'll do my roast and recap of the Valley tomorrow. But like I always say, remember to enjoy yourself because it's later than you think. Bye. If you like what you